Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are welcome to our meeting where the word of God is preached, is taught in season and out of season. Mm. Praise the Lord. Amen. We thank God for what has transpired already. Now, as we enter the second phase of the teaching and the preaching of the word of God, I pray that you open your ears, open your hearts to receive, thou seer the Lord. Mm -hmm. Not me, thou seer the Lord from the scriptures, from the word of God, that you will be blessed. Praise the Lord. Amen. The theme for this morning is about covenant. And when it comes to covenant, there are different types of covenants God made with mankind. I mean, coming to the children of Israel, Abraham and his descendants. Praise the Lord. But before we go on, my theme is still the everlasting covenant. We have covenants which live within the old and the new. But everlasting covenant include the old and the new. Therefore, when it is called Everlasting covenant, you cannot run away from the old or the new. They are all included, inclusive. Praise the Lord. But before we go, we want to understand the word covenant. What is the definition of covenant? The word covenant is a noun. It means an agreement between two or group of people Nations, tribes, companies, corporations, and so on. Most of the time, they enter into a covenant, which some of the time they call agreement. Praise the Lord. But before God, we enter into a covenant with man. He entered a covenant with his creation first. Before he came to Noah and his children. Let's look at that briefly. Then we pray. Genesis chapter 8. Let's read from verse 20. What God did with his own creation. After Noah and his children came out from the ark. That saved their life from destruction when the whole world was destroyed because of the flood that God allowed to destroy them because they hardened their heart. They have unrepented heart. We are in the days of Noah. So if you take a lesson from the Noah, Noah's time, you should run to Jesus. That to be like the days of the Noah's time. When many people heard about destruction, but they didn't take care. According to the Bible, they went marrying, partying, traveling here and there. Until the flood came and destroyed them all. But after the flood, those eight families that were saved, and animals and creations, God decided to enter into a covenant with them first. Before, there is a need for a covenant. There is a need for agreement. So that through that agreement, we can observe and obey God. Praise the Lord. Let me read from verse 20 of Genesis chapter 8. This is what the Bible said. And Noah built an altar unto the Lord and took of every clean beast 
and of every clean fowl, and offer burnt offerings on the altar that he has built it. And the Lord smelled a sweet savor. And the Lord said in his heart, not me, God, I will not again curse the ground anymore for man's sake. For the imagination of man, sat is evil from his youth. Neither will I again smite anymore anything living as I have done. Why the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest, and cold and heat, and summer and winter, and day and night shall not cease. Praise the Lord. Amen. Father, we thank you for the reading of your word. Father, I reduce myself that you increase inside me. Speak out to the hearing of our audience, the congregation that listen to us. That they will know of the truth. Something went wrong. And God has entered into covenant with his own creation after sacrifice has been made by Noah and his children. I thank you, Father. I bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You see, what happened during Noah time? It was because of the wickedness of the heart of man to the extent that they ignore the warnings, the preachings, the gospel that was being preached towards them for them to repent. But they still the depravity of their hearts, their mind, their soul has caused them to reject the warning call that Noah has to preach for 120 years. The yes, the people will not repent. Bible said God doesn't desire love the death of a sinner. But he wants the sinner to come to a place of repentance. That his life must be spared. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Thank God I'm elate. Amen. I'm justified. Amen. And I'm being glorified Amen. through Hallelujah. the word of God. Amen. Everything that my heart touch, because the glory of God is inside me. It touches the person. Hallelujah. The word I speak, it touches the person. That those people who come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, that the glory might be given to him. Amen. That he spoke through me. Not my words, but his word. I'm just a conduit. is being used. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You see, when we talk about a covenant, because man refused to obey God, Starting from the garden, Adam and Eve, his son Cain, to the point that man was disobedient to God, to the extent that God was angry with man. And he said, It grieved me that I have created man upon the earth. And he decided to wipe away his own creation Gee. whom he has taken time to build to, build to create mm. and put his breath inside him yeah. and name that man that he has created. He shall be called a living soul. Mm. Praise the Lord. Yeah. This man that God has created he gave him Commandments to observe. He gave me everything that will cause him to succeed. When he was creating my, he said this within himself to the Godhead. Let that which we will create 
Be fruitful. Multiply. Subdue. Have dominion. But all this was thrown to the side, to the side mm -hmm. when they listened to the devil yes. who borrowed the body, the body of the serpent spoke to him. And for them to repent, they say, I'm sorry I disobeyed you. They just passed the box. <laughs> Adam passed it on to Eve. Eve. He passed it on to the serpent. Mm -hmm. And actually, uh, I don't know whether I can say this. I pity the, the, the serpent. He was not even given a chance to even to own out that the, serpent, the devil spoke through me. He was cursed immediately. <laughs> because you have done this on your belly, you shall walk. Thus shall you eat all the rest of your life. <laughs> before they return to them. Praise the Lord. God sees that Something must be done. So God decided to come into agreement with man. Yes. Mm -hmm. He came to make a covenant. But what I'm talking about now, I cannot finish all now. But I'm talking about everlasting covenant. Yes. A covenant that will last forever ever. and ever Amen. and to ever. That's what I'm talking about. Hallelujah. We have all type of covenants. But the one that supersedes all is what God named everlasting yeah, covenant. Yes. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. God entered into a covenant with Noah after talking about his own creations. But let's see the covenant that God entered. With Noah. Let's open the book of Genesis chapter 9. Starting from verse 17. This is what the Bible says. And God said unto Noah. This is a talking. Of the covenant. Which I have established. Between me. And all flesh. That is upon the earth. A covenant has been established. And the sons of Noah. And. That went forth. Of the ark. With Shem. Ham. Japheth. And Ham. Is the father of Canaan. Let me stop there. Praise the Lord. This covenant I'm talking about is between God and Noah and his children. But the covenant I want to talk about is a covenant between God and Abraham, the father of faith. Praise the Lord. Let's jump to the book of Genesis chapter 17. Let me read something from verse 1. And I'll continue. Praise the Lord. And when Abraham was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abraham and said unto him, I am the almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. That was a demand from God. To Abraham. And I will make my covenant. Hallelujah. Between me and thee. I will multiply thee. Exceedingly. And Abraham fell upon his face. And talked with him saying. As for me. Behold. My covenant is with thee. And thou shalt be a father of many nations. Neither. Shall their name. Any more be called Abraham. But thy name shall be called Abraham. For the father of many nations have I made thee. And I will make thee exceedingly fruitful. And I will make nations 
of thee. And kings shall come out of thee. And I will establish my covenant between me and thee. And thy seed after thee in their generation. For an everlasting covenant. Hallelujah. To be a God unto thee. And to thy seed after thee. Let me take verse 7. Because my theme is based there. Verse 7 says. Genesis chapter 17 verse 7. And I will establish my covenant between me and thee. And thy seed. Not many seed, one seed, which has to do with Jesus Christ. After thee, in their generations, for an everlasting covenant, to be a God unto thee, and to thy seed after thee. This covenant God was making with Abraham has his son in view, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. The psalmist said, I have another world in view. I have another world in view. That world I'm talking about is about the man called Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the anointed one. Praise the Lord. This Jesus Christ I'm talking about, see where he began from. Between thy seed and you, Abraham. That seed it's not talking about Isaac. No. Isaac is going to be a conduit through Jacob yes. and the children of Israel mm -hmm. who found themselves in bondage in Egypt for 400 years plus. Mm. But yes, sir, that seed might be protected. Yes. That seed might be protected. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You see, God, as I begin to understand it better than before, Lord, forgive me if I do something wrong by doubting you. There's no doubt in my heart concerning you. Hallelujah. For sending your son, Jesus Christ, the seed that you made an everlasting covenant between you and Abraham. You change his name, his name from Abraham to Abraham. What a wonderful God. Amen. What an excellent God. Yes, yes. What a truthful God. What a faithful God. What a righteous God. Amen. A just God. Hey. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You're sitting upon your throne. It's as a righteous and judgment upon this earth. People don't want to hear that you are upon F. You know about F. You created the F. Yes. Praise the Lord. The God I'm talking about is a covenant keeping God. And his covenant towards mankind has no end. Nope. No. Never. Everlasting. It runs through generations. To generations. Mm -hmm. If only you can heed to the word of God. Especially those who are in the time of the New Testament. Who have come under the covenant of the new covenant. Through Jesus Christ's blood. Be careful. You people have a better opportunity. To enter into a everlasting covenant with God. Through Jesus Christ. Because that covenant. It's announced to be everlasting, everlasting. covenant. Amen. It's not announced by a man. It's announced by the creator of the heaven and the earth. The giver of life. Who put breath into human beings. And they wake up every morning. They walk about. Even forgetting to say, Lord, I thank you for waking me up. Uh -huh. And they boast, they brag. And they doubt God in many ways. Mm. But hear me as you are listening. There is no other God. That creates you. That empowers you. That guides you. Than the father. Of our Lord Jesus Christ. For the Bible says. Blessed be the God. Of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us 
with all spiritual blessings in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Blessed be that God, who is the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the covenant that God has entered with Abraham. There is an everlasting covenant between me, you, Abraham, and thy seed, Jesus Christ, who called God his father. Who called God his father. Can you also call God your father? Not until you obey, you receive Jesus Christ. Yep. You believe in him. Hmm. You cannot call God yes. your father. father. No. No. But Jesus Christ, he said, Father, Father, Father. Father. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. I, I, Amen. These, these theologians, they might be very careful. They are joking with God. Amen. These Anglican theologians, Bishop and Abishop, yeah. who want to change the name of God the Father because he has some female parts of humanity or some group of people or the uh, same-sex marriages that uh, uh, God is not a, a, a man or, 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 or a woman. God is not male or female. God is God. Therefore, when they call God the Father, they are hating some uh, uh, sexual uh, sections <laughs> that uh, they, they, they will change the name of Father. They will change the pronoun. Let me say this to them. If Jesus Christ is calling God his father, who are you, who are you to, say to say otherwise that you will change the pronouns uh -huh. just because of your inclinations uh -huh. towards sinfulness, yes. immorality, abomination hmm. to please them? Hmm. God forbid. Father of God, our God, who is our father? He runs through generations to generation. Mm -hmm. He runs through Genesis to Revelation. There's no way he can take one name, which is the pronoun of God, Father, who Jesus Christ is calling, and you make the Bible truthful again. No, you can never. You are setting the Bible at a standstill. Without Father! Without Father, we have no salvation. Nope. For God, the Father loves us so much mm. that He gave His only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. Yep. That whosoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Mm. That's why Jesus Christ can call God the Father. 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 Into thy hands I commit my spirit. Mm. Hallelujah. Mm. You want to make mother for God? <laughs> it's your choice. But it's not in the scriptures. The scriptures are inspired by the Spirit of God, known as the Holy Spirit. Amen. A holy man wrote it down for our study. That should be our guide in this life. But if we reject the scriptures, the word of God, you have no God in this world. No, no. It is through the scriptures. Some of us know God Amen. as our personal God. Amen. And we believe in Him. And we move forward. Yes. And He's blessing us now. Don't look at me. That I'm not rich. I don't have this machine to my name. I don't have this car to my name. But there's something working within me. Bring it outside. That I am the redeem of the Lord. Amen. I have eternal life. Yes. Heading towards my father in his kingdom. Yeah. You might not know what I'm talking about. But hear this before I continue. There is life after this life. Amen. The reason is that sin has taken place. Rebellion has taken place. Arrogance are taking place in the life of our forefathers, Amen. Adam and Eve, in the garden. 
And that is the beginning of destruction of mankind. Of mankind. Mm. The man is still struggling under the yoke of sin that the devil led him into. But thank God for the provision Hallelujah. that God made, the Father made. Mm. Oh, God, I thank you. Father God, I thank you. Amen. You love us so much that you provided a remedy, solution to our plight. The yoke that is upon our neck, the burden that is upon our head, that through Jesus Christ, it should be broken, it should be lifted, that we can walk as you determine and you create us in your image. To be fruitful, multiply, multiply, multiply replenish, replenish, subdue, mm -hmm. and have dominion. Yeah, this thing yeah. that you gave to us, the devil hated it yeah. and tried to take us off it. Mm -hmm. But thank God for Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. Yeah. The Bible said, the lamp of God that was slain before the foundation of this earth has come. To the point that when he was about to begin his ministry after 30 years of hiding, when he showed up to John the Baptist, hmm. there it was revealed to that great prophet. Behold, the Lamb of God that take away the sins of the whole world. If you only confess him, your sins shall be taken away. Yes. You have a new life. You will enjoy it. Some of you, is it around the Jesus? Yeah. I don't believe in God. You believe in Big Bang. You believe in evolution. But I want to submit to you. God is not in evolution. Nope. God revealed himself in the scriptures, the word of God. That's why you can get God. If you read his word, you meditate upon it. It will guide you into all truth. Yeah. Some of you are peddling lies. Philosophical wisdom of man that is polluted. Sociology, psychology, all those things, if it's not um, a, 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 a invested in the Holy Spirit, it benefits you nothing. We were talking about it this morning. The fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. And the knowledge of the Holy is understanding. If you don't have the fear of God, you are lacking wisdom. If you don't know the holy, you lack understanding. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. For the Bible said, Proverbs chapter 23, verse 23, Buy the truth and sell it not. And wisdom, instruction, and conclusion said, understanding. Oh, hallelujah. If you lack understanding, you cannot believe in God. If you lack understanding, you can't believe in God. Amen. That's why you cannot even fear God. True. So that you can have wisdom of God. Uh -huh. Not the wisdom of this world. Uh -uh. The Big Bang brought nothing to this world. It's a lie of the devil. But you know what the devil is doing? He has high his prophets. His professors, they wrote books about evolution. Mm. We had to do a big bang. The man evolved from some inorganic things until he came to gorilla, chimpanzee, monkeys. Mm -hmm. And man has developed from there to become man. That's a lie of the devil. But I want to say this to you. 
I was born some years ago. I have not seen fowl turn into hawk. I have not seen duck turn into an eagle. They are all observing their boundaries. If we God created them. They know how to stop their boundaries. I have not seen a lion having a body of a leopard or tiger. They all maintain their boundaries. What is then the evolution? Now you talk about man. Man evolved <laughs> from this stage to this stage. From monkey, animal. gorilla, animal. animals, animal. and this and that animal. to come become man. Why is that one you are giving birth to a child? You don't see a child born as a gorilla and develop to monkey and monkey and become a human being. And you are buying to all those lies. And they wrote their books, textbooks called Evolution Book. And they are teaching it in the schools and the universities. And they have come to a time, a place that they want to change children from female to male. And men are changing their self from male to female. Men are turning themselves from female to male. But you have not created yourself. The one that created you. Say, remain what you are. And be thankful and serve me. But because you rebel, you don't want to serve God. You don't want to obey God. But God brought a covenant between himself and those that are willing to obey him. And he named it everlasting. everlasting covenant. Everlasting. When you come against the everlasting covenant of God, by which he hold you to obey, you spread doom to yourself. You will not like it now. But you come to see that, yes, I heard the truth by listening. Praise the Lord. Amen. God entered a covenant with Abraham. And most of the covenants, they are known as blood covenants. And those covenants, if you enter, you can't return. You can't back out. If you back out, you are in violation. The consequences of violating that co covenant is destruction, death. Yes. Mm. Praise the Lord. Amen. It is not I who enter a covenant with you. Man is God. It's God. Mm -hmm. Man. But the devil also wants to make what? A copy, carbon copy of God's covenant. For that reason, he enter a covenant with man to man. That people, they will cut themselves. Here and here, this man take his blood from here, put it in his neighbor's blood. This man can put in his hand, say, this is a covenant that will not fight one another. But the covenant that God made with Abraham and his seed, through circumcision, is more than that carbon copy. Yeah. Yeah. Praise the Lord. True. Go and enter a blood covenant with Abraham. Through what? Circumcision. Through what? Circumcision. Hallelujah. When you continue on in this book that we are studying, Genesis chapter 17, verse 10, let's read some account of the covenant between God and Abraham. The Bible said, Verse 10, 
This is my covenant, which he shall keep between me and you, and thy seed after thee. Every man child among you shall be circumcised. And ye shall circumcise the flesh of your false king. And it shall be a token of covenant between me and you. And he that is eight days old shall be circumcised among you. Every male, every man, child in your generation. He that is born in the house or bought with money or uh, of any stranger which is not of thy seed. He that is born in thy house and he that is bought with thy money must need be circumcised and my covenant shall be in your flesh for an everlasting covenant. Praise the Lord. An everlasting covenant. Nobody can reverse that covenant. Nobody can do a tap again. The only covenant that can be compared with it is a covenant that Jesus Christ made with the world through us. His blood covenant. That he went on the cross because of our sins. He was nailed in the palms and in the legs. He is entering a blood covenant with the world. But the only way you can benefit from that covenant is when you believe in that Jesus Christ. There were many other covenants in the Old Testament. But the Bible said, if there's no fault with the old covenant, there will be no place given to the new that he entered through the blood of Jesus. What covenant are you under? What are you observing? Believe in Jesus Christ. Confess him as your personal Savior and Lord. Forsaking your own ways. Yes. And believe in what he taught. What the apostles are teaching. Through the epistle that they wrote down for our study. You have entered into a covenant. With the seed of Abraham. Amen. Which is Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yes. I say praise the Lord. Amen. Why is it that. God will have to enter a covenant with Abraham. Through circumcision. It means that he's giving life back to those who were dead spiritually. Because the life of every living thing is in the blood. As the blood is shed, life goes into the dead man and become alive. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. If you don't understand covenant, I want to remind you one more time. When we talk about a covenant, it's an agreement between two or three or a group of people that this one will do. It should not be broken. Nope. It's between a nation and a nation. That we will not war against each other. Mm -hmm. It's against tribes. That will not hurt you. You will also, you also not hurt us. But the covenant that God made with Abraham, which is known as an everlasting covenant, mm -hmm. is more than all covenants. Yes. Praise the Lord. Receive after him, brother. God has made a covenant. But what is a covenant? And then God made a promise unto you. That promise has become what? A covenant. Hmm. When God made a decree through his word, it has become a covenant. Praise the Lord. Amen. The Bible said, In the book of Hebrew, chapter 6, let's go there. The book of Hebrew, chapter 6. 
Let me start something from verse 13 to the end. This is what the Bible is saying. For when God made a promise, prom made promise to Abraham, because he could not swear, but no greater, he swore by himself. Saying, surely, blessing, I will bless you. I will bless thee. Multiply, I will multiply thee. So after he had patiently endured, as was taught this morning, he obtained the promise. Yes. For men very sway by the greater, and an oath for confirmation is to them an end of all strife. When God, wherein God, willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of promise the immutability of his counsel, confirm it by an oath. There by two immutable things in which it was impossible for God to lie. We might have a strong consolation. Who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us. Which hope we have as an anchor of the soul. Both sure and steadfast. Steadfast which entered into that within the veil. Whether the forerunner is for us entered, even Jesus made an high priest forever after the order of Messiah. Praise the Lord. You see, when we talk about the word of God, anytime God speaks his word, that word becomes a covenant. It becomes a commandment, commandment. It becomes his law. And he has his promises that he keeps. He never falter. God is not a man to lie. Not a son of man to repent. He is God. The Bible said, Once have I heard God spoke. Once he has spoken, twice. but twice have I heard him. Once I have heard God spoke, twice. but twice have I heard him. The power belongs to him. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. He's a powerful God. Amen. That when he speaks his word, it becomes a law to be obeyed. Those of you are running from God. Just because you want to be accountable to God. Somebody said, if more half the time, he has denied there is no existence of God. Because you want to be accountable to God. But the creator who is God cannot be removed away from his creation. Because when he was creating the world, nobody was there to witness it. And when evolution is being practiced, written in theory, it has not become fact or practical yet. These two things, according to a, a brother, it takes faith to believe one of them. Yes. But I'll put my faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. I'll put my faith in the scriptures, the Bible. Mm -hmm. And I'll have God based upon my understanding as my personal God. Hallelujah. For he sustained me through his son, Jesus Christ. I will be here today. I will not be his son, Jesus Christ, which was the word of God, which is the word of God, who will be the word of God, who is sent into the world through an angel and Mary, a virgin, a spouse to a devoted man, a devoted man, Receive that word. And that word caused him to be pregnant without sleeping with a man. Mm. Gave birth to that baby. And that baby grew. 30 years time, he showed up and started his ministry. Confronted by the devil. 
That if you say you are the son of God. And you are hungry after fasting for 40 days, 40 nights. You can't do a son of God. Command these stones to become bread for you to eat and quench your hunger. But the word himself spoke within himself. It is written about me. Me being the word that became flesh. Thou shall not depend upon bread to live, but upon every word, hallelujah, who is me. That proceeded out of the mouth of God. The spoken word become Jesus Christ. Therefore, Jesus Christ is the word. If you believe in him, you receive the word into your heart. And that word will work within you. Amen. Turn you away from darkness to light. Yes. Amen. From death to life. Mm-hmm. From curse to blessing. Yes. From sickness to health. Mm-hmm. From poverty to rich wealth. Yes. Some of us are thinking about wealth. <laughs> As material thing. But no, that's God, that's the Spirit. Hmm. Our wealth is a spiritual wealth. Amen. That cannot be taken away from us. Right. It's with us in Jesus Christ. Amen. And what belongs to Jesus Christ belongs to us. Mm-hmm. Because we have been made a joint heir with Christ. That whatever he benefited after suffering on our behalf. Now sitting at the right hand of God the Father, all authority is given to him. Mm. It's ours. Praise the Lord. Amen. Mm. Let me say this. If you are denying accepting Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and Lord, there's no other means that you can reunite with your Creator. But don't forget, this earth is polluted. God is not going to use this earth as eternal home. That's why we are dying. Because of sin. Adam is not created to die. Eve is not created to die. But because they believe the devil, because of rebelliousness, sin, the devil told them to choose the wrong fruit. And when they ate it, they die based upon what God said to them. They were thinking they would die physically. They died spiritually. And they carried the weight of death, sin upon themselves. But hear me now. The only way You can avenge yourself from the weight of sin, death, and hell. It won't when you hear the word of God, which is Jesus Christ. We say nobody can come to Jesus Christ except the Father draws him. The word of God from the Father is drawing you. This morning, that you come to Jesus. For he opened his arm on the cross by saying, Come unto me, ye that labor heavily laden with sin, death, sickness, and diseases, for I will give you rest. rest. I will wash you anew. Mm-hmm. It's because of that I came to shed the blood. It took the blood to wash away sins, it took the blood. To atone for a case. It is the blood to take away diseases. Mm -hmm. If you want to be free, and even after this life, you have a place to spend time in the kingdom of God, which you call eternal life. Come to Jesus. Accept Him. You say, I don't have to go. Go to the church around you. Tell the pastor you heard the word. It pricked your heart. And you want to make amend with his God, my God. Hallelujah. I come here to accept Jesus Christ. As my personal Savior Lord, let me tell you, that pastor or that leader who accept you wholeheartedly 
and begin to direct you on the path of eternal life. You cannot avoid hell without accepting Jesus Christ. If you don't accept Jesus Christ, based upon what I'm saying through the scriptures, you are on the path of domination, eternal hell, where the devil was condemned already. He's just waiting to be com committed into that hell. You will not like to spend eternity with the devil. But if you're on earth here, you're not listening to the scriptures. You're not accepting Jesus Christ. You choose to be with the devil already. <laughs> but you avoid the truth, the truth mm -hmm. that is coming to you. Mm -hmm. That you will not go to hell. Confess Jesus Christ. As your personal Savior and Lord. Join the group of believers in Christ. Believe in the gospel. There are many other gospels over there. They are not the gospel of Jesus Christ. They are also working hard. Being pushed by the devil. The lie that is sold in the garden. Is still selling it to the people. Yes. That they believe in that. Believe in this. Avoiding Jesus Christ. But the only way. That you can avoid damnation. Is only the truth. Which is Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus. God is our creator. And when you lost your way, you still have the chance on planet Earth to bring it back mm -hmm. to the path of righteousness. Yes. And the only way that you can come is through the gospel, the truth that you are hearing now. Yes. We are selling no product, hmm. we are building no mansion. We are making no degrees. But we are telling you about your soul. Hallelujah. That will come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Amen. That you not find your soul in the lake of fire. Mm. But you find your place in the kingdom of God. Amen. Your spirit following after your soul. Mm. When you make it up to the kingdom of God. Yes. There you have everlasting life. Mm. Yes. It is appointed unto man wants to die. Hear this. And after that, the judgment. judgment. The judgment is committed into the hand of Jesus Christ. Yes. If you assert him, he will know you. When you walk with him, he will not condemn you. But if you don't accept him, you go your own way. You do it by your own intellect. Your philosophy. Your medical science. Without the wisdom of God, the word of God, which is Jesus Christ, your effort will amount to zero. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I say, Praise the Lord. Amen. Why are we crying? Telling you what to do. Because we know. That day is at the corner. It's soon coming. When you don't have time to repent again. Now is the hour of salvation. Accept Jesus as your personal Savior Lord. Be in the body of Christ. Study with the children of God. Study with believers. Make up your mind. And God, mercy will be extended to you more than you thought. And the grace will abound to you. Who so shall have called upon the name of the Lord. The Bible says he shall be saved. But who will not call upon the name of the Lord. The Bible said he's condemned already. Because he has not believed. On the only begotten son of God. The sacrifice. That God sent to the world. That through him. He might be saved. I pray God. That this everlasting covenant. You benefit something from it. That will not be fully around entering into worldly covenants with demons, with idols, with spirits, cause thinking you are powerful. Let me tell you, they have no good news for you. 
to conclude, if you don't have Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and Lord, you will become a tool in the hands of the devil Amen. for your destruction. Hmm. Yesterday, I saw a video that hurt me so much just because the person has become a tool in the hand of the devil. If you are not serving God, you have become a playground of the devil. He will decide for you. He will instruct you. And you do it finish before you realize that you have done the wrong thing. In Nigeria, West Africa, a husband, I don't know what came upon him, took a knife or machete, cut the hand here, here of the wife. The face, the face, and remain alive. And when he has finished that, he took poison and he died. That you should not be arrested for what he has done. Look at what the devil inspired him to do. Now, he died ahead of the one that he was trying to kill. Head. When you are not in Christ, the devil will give you an assignment. And when you finish it, you back out from you. Now you discover yourself. You become alone. For the consequence of your brutality, what you face as a punishment, nobody has taken your life. You took your life. Guess where you end up? You end up with the yeah. devil. Yeah. It's after your soul. It's after your soul. But if you are in Jesus Christ, the devil cannot detect you to do the wrong thing. For he is the father of all lies. The Bible said, John 10 verse 10, the devil had but come to kill, to steal, and to destroy. But the Lord Jesus Christ has come to give life and give more abundantly. Amen. That's why I'm calling to Jesus. Amen. Come to Jesus. You're not coming to me. I cannot save you. The price he paid on the cross of Calvary is what saved my life. It will save your life. I thank God for my, uh, uh, my minister. He gave me testimony. He touched me. I was sitting down there. The devil was inspiring him to take his own life. But God, who elected him before the foundation of this world was laid, Hallelujah. said, don't do that. And he didn't do that. He confessed that he's a better off now than when he was thinking of that time. Amen. Be one of those people who will not follow the devil and do the wrong thing and later on regret. If you kill yourself, you are not going to heaven. You are going still to the hell. And the devil will tell you that I deceive you. I influence you. I deceive you. Come and spend eternity with me. I have been judged already. Why should I follow the devil? It's not my friend. It's my enemy. He come after me. But because I believe in Jesus Christ, he's protecting me. I am under the winds of God. That he cannot hurt me. Hallelujah. But this hope that I have in Jesus Christ, that if I serve him, I have eternal life. May you have that same hope. By coming to Jesus Christ, that you have eternal life. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Let me pray. Amen. Father God, I thank you and I bless you. Thank you for this day that you've given to us. You have spoken your word mightily to your hearers. I pray that they will take you, make decision. I pray, God, do not procrastinate. Do not give excuses. For we have no more time left for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Those who accept Jesus Christ as their personal Savior and Lord who avoid domination 
from the hellfire with the devil. There is a place God prepared for you that we call eternal life, everlasting life, where you spend eternity. Accept him as I direct you. Go to any Bible believing church and tell the pastor you have accepted Jesus Christ through the message. I want to be a part of this family worshiping here. They will receive you. God bless you as you embark upon this journey with us. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Amen.